Once again, in its all-encompassing wisdom, the algorithm led me to expand my horizons. From watching compilations of liminal spaces, it guided me to the land of vaguely familiar places, pictures that feel strangely familiar but are uncomfortable, and places you've visited in your dreams. Weird core, dream core, trauma core. I realized I found myself in another rabbit hole and my interest was piqued. But it was difficult to find any information on the topic. It wasn't big enough yet for any magazines to talk about it. In turn, the general awareness and public interest in the different aesthetics I stumbled across was relatively low. However, they experienced a big spike in popularity as of lately, at least in their respective communities, which grow larger by the minute. So I set out to find the answer to what lies at the core of Weirdcore. First of all, what does core stand for? Is it just something put after a random noun to claim it as an aesthetic? The word core itself can be attributed to the French counterpart cœur, meaning heart. This way, genres with a core suffix can be described to focus around one central idea that lies at the heart of it. The musical origins of core can be traced back to the hardcore movement in punk music, which kind of adds an edge and countercultural vibe to it. It's important to note that core isn't a trademarked word, same as the as of lately popular academia suffix. There are countless microcultures spawning from these central ideas. The spreading, expanding and developing of the aesthetics happens by meme-like distribution cycles, sharing, manipulating and reposting the original content. It uses the tightly knit internet community to further expand its reach. Now with that out of the way, let's take a look at the different aesthetics. Weirdcore is an online aesthetic and debatably an art movement centered around amateur or low-quality photography and or digital graphics that have been constructed or edited to convey feelings of confusion, disorientation, alienation and nostalgia respectively. Weirdcore as an umbrella term for various splinter aesthetics is reminiscent of cursed images and liminal spaces in the sense that it represents threshold experience and offers a distinct feeling of peering into another reality. There is both musical and visual aspects to the genre, which can be consumed by themselves or to reach the desired synergetic effect in combination. The music heard in Weirdcore edits is a result of the synergy of the times we live in. Genres like glitchcore and internetcore, which take advantage of the combination of trend culture and nostalgic feeling of the early internet days, are thriving. In this way, many tracks use the synth-heavy feel of the music used with liminal spaces that experienced great popularity recently. This way, the music can safely replicate the vaguely nostalgic vibe necessary for many weirdcore works. Electronic elements work perfectly in both liminal spaces and weirdcore tracks as a very foreign element, the very non-organic and alien sound pushing the sense of estrangement. Liminality is also found in the tracks themselves, often being mere background music or OSTs from early 2000s games like Human Nikki, Soup 0.9 or Earthbound. This in turn awaking nostalgia from the people having played these games in their childhood. The tracks are being edited in a certain way, pitched, slowed down and chopped, which creates more ties to its musical origins in synthwave. The noise adds the deteriorating theme of memories and looking at your past through the fog. Weirdco uses distorted wave samples and irregular, almost amateurish editing to disrupt the natural flow of the tracks, creating a certain suspense. It evokes that feeling of browsing through a long dead message boards, like walking through a digital ghost town except all the previous residents are there frozen, snapshots of people stuck in time, cursed to be trapped in the abandoned digital halls forever. Sound effects often include a dripping noise like from leaking pipes, the humming of fluorescent lights, the high notes of music boxes and distant chatter as of a kid's party. 
All of these are elements often picked up by the visuals. Given it oftentimes uses background music or OSTs, many weird cut tracks are pure instrumentals and lack the human connection given by sung lyrics. The closest we get is the coded samples, entirely artificial voices, further grounding the experience in the uncanny valley. It makes the estrangement complete. Weirdcore music is also subverting the rather recent trend of lo-fi music by inserting an element of discord into the otherwise calm tracks, now becoming deformed and sinister like a nursery rhyme gone wrong. More specific to why this type of music is gaining so much popularity now, the pandemic may be acting as a catalyst. There is more activity, more focus and accelerated development of internet culture, aesthetics, the collective consciousness and so on. This interwovenness is seen in how fluid the borders are between the microgenres in music as well as other parts. Playlists are often dedicated to two or three of the aesthetics at the same time, and roughly speaking, one can use the term dream and weird core interchangeably when talking about the type of music. The only difference maybe being that Dreamcore makes lighter use of cluttering the tracks with all these effects rather than letting it breathe and lean to a softer vibe. Trauma Core, however, is thematically very much separated from the other two, even though it draws from the same pool of image manipulation and type of music. But even so, there is a variety of increasingly smaller genres emerging from the main weirdcore movement. Webcore, for example, is using the effects of old technology, booting up and pop-up sounds to create its tracks devoted solely to the early internet era. The point is that it becomes increasingly hard to draw a line between Dream and Weirdcore, as there are almost no artists creating music specifically for this purpose. A few ones like Jack Stauber just happen to fit the mood the new aesthetics are going for, and so his tracks can be found in almost every weird slash Dreamcore playlist. There are artists emerging right now, but they are few and far between. So for the time being, most artists will merely be attributed to the genre, probably without them ever knowing about it. Visually, both Weird and Dreamcore are strongly influenced by the general look and feel of images shared on the early internet, roughly a period spanning from around the late 90s to mid 2000s. Amateur editing, primitive digital graphics, lo-fi photography and image compression are some of the more common elements found in Weirdcore images. Low resolution of pictures and text speaks to amateurism, but also a sense of deterioration and decay, both in a metaphorical sense but also regarding thoughts and memories. The ominous and the threatening, combined with cheery effects, is creating a kind of discord and dysphoria. Sometimes the contrast is being created by both the picture and the accompanying music adding one side of the equation. This makes it a compound experience, where one element alone won't have the same impact. In a way, Weirdcore and Dreamcore media are supposed to be consumed as this symbiotic amalgamation which is only made possible by the internet and its various streaming platforms. The deliberate juxtaposition of opposing elements borderline on absurdist and post-ironic humor of Gen Z, like cursed or nonsensical images making memes out of names, food or even single letters. Applied to Weirdcore, this principle manifests in nature inside houses or childlike effects and objects within vaguely menacing settings like empty hallways, dark rooms or vacant tables at a kid's party. The ambiguity and lack of context in the images stimulate the mind to fill in the gaps in an attempt to create familiar connections. You get a certain feeling of purgatory, a sensation of limbo and disorientation, like waking up from a brief afternoon nap in your childhood, where for a short time everything feels foreign and unreal. And with this lack of context comes a loss of purpose, which in turn creates a loss of identity. This invokes dread because we can't pinpoint what's amiss. We're at odds with our surroundings, and this triggers some deeply rooted fear as some primal instinct alerts us of danger. But unlike with our ancestors, it stays at this vague gut feeling, because there is no clear threat, it is either the environment or some element in it intentionally withheld from us. Both things we are powerless against, it is the fear of the unknown. Altered is an important keyword in the context of all these aesthetics. As the audio and visuals are often distorted and changed, so is the world that we get a tiny glimpse of through the flurry of dead malls, empty playgrounds and censored faces or objects. It's reminiscent of the backrooms, or no clipping out of reality. Hence the common theme of the sky or clouds inside, a presented choice, the clash of the natural with the artificial, or the organic elements conversely becoming foreign elements in their surroundings. As a viewer or listener, ideally both, 
you get the sensation of looking behind a veil, an almost voyeuristic aspect originating from its roots in liminal spaces. One big difference between weird trauma and dreamcore and liminal spaces, however, is the no people rule, as well as the added text effects and distortion, of course. Liminal settings also aim for a mix of nostalgia and dread, but focus on the former, while weirdcore is focused on producing discomfort within its audience. Other common elements include eyes or a different kind of unseen observer, which is often speaking directly to the audience through the messages. It's creating the feeling of being watched. You question yourself if you're doing something very, very bad, or even if observing these scenes is a punishable thing by itself. The way many of the photos are shot puts us in the position of the one taking the photo. This way anything shady going on in the frame is a perceived threat directly to ourselves. Omitted or redacted elements are ever present in all these aesthetics. Blacked out faces, a smudge in your vision, some part of the picture you are not supposed to see, withheld from you for your own good, supposedly. Depending on if the picture is supposed to be dream, weird or even trauma core, you can interpret it in many ways either as a harmless representation of disorientation or gaps in memory which are common in dreams or, and this applies more to trauma core, dissociative amnesia or a way of protecting the mind from whatever forbidden or harmful things lie in the dark, something that is also heavily implied by the text seen in many of the weird and dream core images. By bashing these completely contrary elements together, weird core is creating this alien environment for the mind to explore. It makes one question if there is more to the universe than what we can feel, hear or experience. A common theme includes the aspect of feeling like you have overstepped a certain boundary or being forbidden somewhere, a feeling all too common in liminal spaces, which stems from the contrast of the expected context and what we actually experience. The types of Whitker images opens up two prospects, that you are either alone or that you aren't, both equally unsettling propositions within the given context. There lies a certain anonymity at the core of the aesthetics as well. It lies in the source material itself. Images posted on a forum will be all over the web in a matter of minutes, and it becomes almost impossible to trace back any one specific image to its original creator. That way, the content itself is no longer tied to the creator itself. It creates a self-contained and self-sustaining bubble. The key trait is that Weirdcore, like the other two, doesn't really happen offline. The life cycle of its content is wholly contained in the non-physical. In a way, Weirdcore, like the things it depicts, doesn't really exist in this reality, physically speaking. Derealization, dissociation and depersonalization are concerns with prolonged exposure to Weirdcore and Dreamcore content. It is designed to confuse and to produce discomfort. Regardless of how the process of creating Weirdcore is approached, the images should still aim to put the viewer in an unfamiliar and occasionally somewhat hostile context. The usage of nonsensical elements and opposites as a stylistic device can be traced back to historic art movements like Surrealism, which in turn was inspired by Dadaism. One example are the works of René Magritte, a pioneer of the Surreal art movement. Surrealism was best known for its visual artworks and writings and the juxtaposition of distant realities to activate the unconscious mind through the imagery, something that the Weirdco movement also tries to achieve. Artists painted unnerving, illogical scenes and developed painting techniques that allowed the unconscious to express itself. The liminal weirdness and out-of-context aspects of the creations is now being emulated by Weirdco and its various subgenres. Like Surrealism, the artists and creators of the new internet aesthetics aspire to carve out their works as a kind of anti-art. Dreamcore is often more lighthearted than Weirdcore. It uses brighter or pastel color schemes and more dreamy, ethereal tunes for the music. The music more often has lyrics, they are quote-unquote actual songs, not background tracks. It's more like indie meets synthpop, but it has its outliers too with experimental tracks. It's also lighter on the usage of ominous text, though it's still present in many creations. Dreamcore can be executed without necessarily including text and excessive special effects, but the use of liminal settings and tampering with the source image is a must-have. Some Dreamcore images can basically be described as enhanced liminal spaces. Nonetheless, the bulk of Dreamcore content is heavily edited as to awake the feeling of being in a dream where nothing is as it seems. Common titles of Dreamcore videos include things like places you've seen in your dreams or nightmares. 
you get a feeling of being displaced. The inconsistencies of liminal spaces are alleviated by the over-the-top editing. Especially with Dreamcore, you can get the feeling of derealization. Derealization occurs when you perceive the external world as altered or unreal, when everything becomes seemingly distant, distorted or appears to be plainly wrong. By looking at these unreal landscapes, you can become disillusioned with your own reality, maybe even questioning if this is the one you are supposed to be in at all. Dreamcore offers a unique way of escapism. Trying to go back to simpler times, to withdraw from the troubles of everyday life, it's an attempt at diving into the subconscious mind. The stitched together and poorly executed photo bashing tries to recreate the thought process and the visual experience of dreaming. The phrases appearing in your field of view operate on the same principle, as we process and cope with stuff from the day during sleep. One noteworthy thing is also the appearance of angels or angelic creatures in Dreamcore content. They appear to be the more benign counterpart to the watchful eyes or the invisible observer in Weirdcore. They speak to a subconscious need for comfort or safety and offer the sought-after escapism. Where Weirdcore, and by extension Dreamcore, is incorporating elements of both unique imagery and music, Dramacore doesn't have a distinguished musical score and relies on a mix of the same tracks as its cousin aesthetics. Dramacore is a type of imagery that delves into the themes of abuse and trauma, as far as one can infer from the increasingly disturbing messages or monologues clashing with the visuals. It's not strictly limited to physical or sexual abuse though. Mental, emotional and spiritual abuse are also common themes in Dramacore. It often draws heavily on childlike and angelic themes, done so as a means to portray and reclaim their innocence or a way to seek salvation. Trauma core in general tends to be more focused on trauma experienced in childhood, although adult trauma can also be covered. Many people turn to these images to help them cope with the pain they suffered in the past. Many of the images used in its photo or video edits are derived from other aesthetics like Weirdcore. Trauma core is more a type of art therapy or visual journaling for people with trauma. It is worth noting that the term aesthetic for trauma core is contested since those without trauma may try to romanticize the experience of traumatized individuals. By some it is frowned upon to participate in trauma core if the participant is not a victim of trauma themselves, as it is considered fetishization of a very serious issue. Trauma core can be of use as a venting or a coping mechanism. However, like any kind of coping mechanism, it should not be a stand-in for proper treatment like therapy or medication. In this specific context, when silhouettes of people and whole sections of an image are omitted or redacted with black boxes, it could be attributed to dissociative amnesia, often associated with PTSD or trauma. The brain actively tries to shield the consciousness from harmful memories and block them out completely. The silhouettes could also be stand-ins for either the artists themselves or their abusers. The visual elements, angelic depictions and childlike icons add dissonance to the background of suffered trauma hinted at in the pictures and monologues. The theme of childhood is consistent in the eerie vibe of the images. As a child, one has to rely heavily on emotional responses. This resonates strongly with the aforementioned theme of instinct, feeling of foreboding or something being slightly off. Another prominent element is the theme of rot and decay, maybe associated by the trauma victims with the way they feel rotten or damaged inside. To be honest, Trauma Core alone is a lot more complex and deserves its own analysis. If you want to educate yourself, I've linked a few sources in the video description. All the different genres are related, they have a kind of symbiotic relationship. It's hard to draw a definite line where one aesthetic ends and another begins. Only a rough approximation is possible from some key features that differ between them. However, it is important to know that all of these are just labels. Like the content they are outlining, they are subjective and prone to change. A weird co-experience is collaborative in nature, since the music, source material and editing of the images is usually done by different people. The effect can be pretty hit or miss, because it is targeted at a very specific age group, using late 90s and 2000s imagery and setting and also alluding to early internet days, the new experiences and childlike exploring of possibilities seen in the wacky graphics. Therefore, it is likely to fail at conveying the feeling of displacement, uneasiness and dread to an older audience. Isolating the music from the image material, it's unlikely to invoke any inherent feeling of dissociation or dread from listening to the tracks alone. 
I think what we're seeing with all of these aesthetics is the birth of a new art movement. Whenever there is a new art movement, it always branches into a number of collective different movements. It began with a growing interest in liminal spaces about two years ago and collectively turned into an aesthetic for all sorts of 2000s and 2010s nostalgia. The Covid pandemic acted as a kind of magnifying lens, accelerating all parts of online life, but especially the emergence and transformation of new trends. Maybe what we can observe now in Weird and Dreamcore would have been the logical step a few years down the line of online culture, but maybe it's not. Rather than a natural progression that happens no matter what, one could look at art as the confluence of a collective mindset. Maybe only the events that happened made this new form of art possible. Within Weirdcore, the art is constantly being pushed and evolved by reaching new audience and platforms, the newest among them being TikTok. It offers a certain kind of escapism for those feeling lost or abandoned in current times. The potential of all of these aesthetics lies in the balance of comfort and uneasiness as they can provoke the audience and bring forth an inner truth. To quote writer Joyce Carol Oates, My belief is that art should not be comforting. For comfort we have mass entertainment and one another. Art should provoke, disturb, arouse our emotions, expand our sympathies in directions we may not anticipate and may not even wish. Or in other words, and what in my opinion is the most accurate statement applicable to all of these aesthetics, art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. I want to use this ending section to shout out some creators of the content I talked about. I also want to give an honorable mention to the late Canadian artist Lynn Cohen, whose photographs had a big influence on the evolution of liminal spaces and all art movements springing from them. In her works you can already see what would later become the eerie yet somehow nostalgic edits we see today. Lynn Cohen passed in 2014, but her works can still be seen in the Montreal Museum of Contemporary Art. If you enjoyed this video, let me know and leave a comment about what topics I should talk about in the future. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos, but honestly, I love doing them, so yeah, take care.